Hello everyone, I am Tassa and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of Art event objectives for the black and white magic event in which the Pandesca Mage is added to the game. So let's get into this useless troop as they normally are. Uh, we got red purple arcanes as far as uh, what's coming in with it if you need to go stock up on it. As far as the troop itself, it deals damage to an enemy boosted by uh, mana of all red enemies and then gets to drain five mana from all those red enemies which kind of goes kind of counterproductive to him needing that four damage. Uh, overall, it's going to be pretty bad. Boost ratio is absurdly low, and this thing is basically never going to be used. No relevant traits. It's basically just go upgrade Shen Tank, and that's pretty much the only reason you would stock up on it for this week, other than the Arcanes, is to uh, get that Shen Tang upgrade that you uh, might end up needing. As far as the... Um Event stuff that we have going on this week, we do have 10% to all Shantang, as well as 10% to all Urskea, which has pretty much, I believe, no overlap whatsoever, since I don't think there's a single Urskea in Shantang. And if you want to use this useless troop, you can get 40 extra souls for it in PvP and Explorer. However, this is highly advised not to do, since soul farming is better to do than uh, doing that option. As far as the event key drop table, it is actually not useless, surprisingly. So it is Shantang troops, of course, as far as what is in the drop table. If we go over to troops and go over to the kingdom of Shantang and then click show all if you don't already own all the troops, it'll end up showing you every single thing that is uh, available here. Just make sure to click show all. And as far as the ones that are available, every single thing that you see here is available with the exceptions of any of them that says Lyra's Lair, as well as the Doom of Darkness. Uh, other than those five, every other thing that you see here is available in the event key drop table the most noteworthy ones uh being if you don't already have a copy of divine or pretty low rarity great uh thing for accumulating yellow has a chance to cleanse extra magic stuff like that pretty decent utility for uh man accumulation uh one of the bigger ones that you want to look out for is um quillen uh, Quillen is often used with Divinish Bala for Divinish Bala Quillen meta, insanely good with Rope Dart, but also just in combination in general, pretty good. Uh, Divine um, gives it 40% additional mana start, and both of their converts synergize pretty well together. Normally you want to get the Quillen cast off first, and then do it into Divinish Bala as it synergizes pretty well into her ability, due to all the reds that she needs to get the Skull Convert. So you basically just get one big Skull Convert into another Skull Convert, into getting all their mana right back in, and uh, it's not a perfect loop, but it generally loops enough that you'd pretty much just win the battle before it stops looping. So that's a pretty good combination to have. It also has uh, Lightstorm at the start of battle, which I believe is the only troop that currently has it. Of course, Heroes have it, but I believe it's still the only troop that actually has it attached, which is pretty beneficial. Other than that, Yalgwe, the only troop I actually have gold medaled, is uh, also available from this uh, kingdom. If you're currently not able to do Explore, uh, I mean, sorry, not Explore, but Bounty Hunter, uh, which I believe is in a couple weeks from now as well, the next one. But if you're currently not capable of doing Bounty Hunter with four Bounty Troops due to not having enough stats, Yalgwe is the best fourth option in the game if you're looking to run three Bounty Troops with a single troop. Uh, he is uh, really great all around, has a really high amount of damage that can go into pretty much a double kill if it gets alignment, while also having some magic steal, and he keeps getting bigger over time through his magic gain as well as his life gain off of his uh, final trait. So overall, really great legend. I don't use him too much in the current state of the game. I do use him for one of my Guild War defends, uh, like for this week. Uh, however, still a great troop to have. And other than that, Tolio, uh, pretty situational. However, she is a mana accumulator that um, is sometimes better than Leprechaun, ever so rarely though. Like, ever, ever so rarely. But if you're using a pure color team, the amount of mana accumulation she can end up getting for that pure color team is uh, pretty substantial. And while you don't tend to use her that often, um, definitely an option to have at least, uh, because there are are times where you will end up uh, needing to use her uh, but she's used almost exclusively in pure color teams which hey if nothing else can help with guild war days uh, if you want to go utilize her for that however due to her green overlap it's normally just used with leprechaun instead making her only really a yellow option as far as uh, what she can end up doing there and other than that, uh, technically Moon Rabbit, um, it's mostly used for the Divine Shpala Quillen team, so you can basically get half the components of that team, but uh, using this troop uh, has a blue to yellow convert, that is very commonly used with that due to the bless that it has, which kind of buys pass uh, Entangle and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, overall, pretty decent week to actually use event keys on. Uh, the Mythic here is pretty bad, however, uh, there's a decent handful of Legends and Utility troops, so you might want to go and roll until you get to whichever ones you want, and then stop because the Mythic is completely pointless, you do not want to get Tanya. If you randomly get him, it's okay, but uh, he's basically just a weaker version of Obsidious, uh, is basically the bottom line of what he is. Yeah, anyways, that's event keys. Definitely worth fishing for a couple of those uh, better troops. As far as guild-related events, of course, we do have guild wars going on this week. We do have those coinciding with uh, other events. 
Uh, pretty straightforward. Same thing as always. Make sure to go set all your defend teams and have them ready to go. Speaking of Divine Shabala, Quillen, and Moon Rabbit, uh, this is the team I was referring to. A couple different ways you can build it, but this one uses Rope Dart, Divine Shabala, Moon Rabbit, Quillen into an Assassin. Uh, it's also pretty commonly ran with Frost Mage or for Stealthy for the Rope Dart so that it doesn't get targeted uh, directly. Uh, the order can also be shuffled quite a bit. Uh, there's uh, multiple correct orders <laughs> as far as what you could do with this team. It kind of just depends what kind of counter build you're going for. Uh, this one's obviously based more on Assassin, so we kind of need Rope Dart in the the first slot there to actually be able to utilize it but uh definitely a pretty good team you can pretty much get most of the components of it or at least the moon rabbit quillen available in event keys uh this week so definitely worth uh considering at least there however of course the other event that we have going on is the world lore event a little bit of a weird event unlike normal uh every single one of these lower rarity battles actually give the same amount of points with one big exception the level that they actually give matters so right here in a normal event you would normally think that chief stronghorn this legendary battle would actually be the better battle to go for however on this current week it is actually better to go for this one uh, the reason for this is level is the main thing that matters uh, you basically want to always take the Karandera whenever you see it and uh, otherwise go for the highest level uh, every single time because the Karandera battle will disappear um, uh, if you don't end up doing it and uh, these actually end up getting so high that they actually will give more points than the Karandera battle but I believe you still do the Karandera battle since it does get completely removed every single time that you don't do it. So uh, uh, basically you always do Karandera if it shows up. It has the little mythic border thingy. And uh, otherwise you take the highest level regardless of rarity. Uh, you basically completely ignore rarity this time around in order to take highest level. Anyway, so with these four options, even though this would normally be the better option, uh, the better room is actually right here. And as far as our restriction is Elf and Urskia. One pretty noteworthy thing about this is you do have access to every weapon in the game. So if you need a cheaper team, you can literally just cheese it with Mang, which is what I show for one of the other teams that we'll be going over very soon. But um, yeah, you can use any weapon in the game. So uh, you can use Essence of Evil, you can use Mang, a lot of great options, obviously. But um, this is uh, re very rare because this might actually be the first World Lore event where we actually are able to use any weapon. Because if there's any other restriction, like a color or something else, uh, it does get restricted on the weapon as well. But since these are just troop types, there is no specific weapon restriction. Uh, with that being said, since we are restricted to Elf or Skia, you can run an Elf team. Uh, similar variants to what we're using right now is actually ran as a Guild War Defend team as well uh, for Guild War Week, as it is Guild War Week. However, uh, we're basically just using this as a quick kill option for this event. And don't forget to set those extra magic casting medals. We do have magic uh, as additional for this week, which uh, ends up uh, substantially increasing the amount of damage. I believe we even have enough just to weaver this right out. So as you can see, uh, we just got a triple kill. One of the reasons for the triple kill is uh, Orb Weaver does have a 7 if you have it fully maxed at level 100, does have a 7% chance to get a kill every kill you get. So that's what just triggered right there. If you're wondering why we got triple kill from a double kill, that is why. Uh, you can also um, do some full AoEs. You can even just build full AoEs builds um just build a bunch of full aoes uh the current team that we're using is a lot more based on true damage than specifically doing damage to all enemies simultaneously however if you do want to go down that route it is um going to be pretty effective so right here we take this pride again and then we see kandera we'll go for karandera and you basically just keep cycling it until you keep doing every single highest level and that will just end up giving you a lot of points because the level greatly influences the amount of hides that you end up getting which contribute of course to your uh total points and that's all you have to do. And of course, same rewards as always as far as what you end up getting. And the shop, as usual lately, does not actually have any unique drop, unfortunately. So you just need to go to like tier 3 or tier 4. Uh, tier 3 is the bare minimum. Uh, tier 4 would give you a whole nother full medal for two full medals if you so want to go for it. However, it is a little bit more expensive. I might by the end of the week. But, um... Whichever way you want to go. However, there's no direct unique rewards that you end up getting from it. Uh, and if every person in your guild, all 30 people do tier 3, that will be enough to uh, get to the end. Assuming everyone does their battle. So, let's do with it as you may. Anyways, as far as other things that we got going on this week. Of course, today we got the Faction Assault for Deep Hive. This is where Beatrix is from. Of course, that doesn't make it any more likely that you'll end up getting Beatrix. But it's still a thing. So, um, yeah, that's that. Uh, as far as, um, and it also comes with a weapon, of course, today. It's a pretty useless weapon, so it's probably just worth skipping over. However, if you do want to get it, it won't be available for a while, so you still got some time on that. Very little time. But as far as that, we do have the uh, kitty here. Uh, I believe this was for International Cat Day, or is that a dog? I can't remember because it's so grayed out. It's for either International Cat Day or International Dog Day, whichever one we didn't have. Uh, that'll be available tomorrow. It's fully cosmetic, so unless you're going to we wield the little mage, uh, it doesn't actually have any effect. It's just a little cosmetic thingy, so... Um, yeah, we just have that going on. Definitely make sure to get it as cosmetic pets uh, don't roll back around for quite some time. So 
Make sure to get your hands on it. Pretty straightforward. Though, as far as uh, those events, you can just cheese it with Mang the entire time. Mang, Mang Titan can uh, sell that out if you don't have any other options to take it out with. Other than that, Monk Hero Class is Thursday. One of those hero classes that seemed like it was going to be insanely good, but due to not having half mana start, just kind of out, um, gets outpaced by other hero classes. Still a pretty decent hero class, so very situational on when you would end up using it. It does have the most amount of immunities of any hero class in the game, which is still big biggest benefit that it still has to this day. And other than that, this Friday we are getting a new faction for um, Adana. So if you want to preemptively level this place up to 14 so that you can get the extra horde bonus just to make it a little bit easier, or, uh, it would be a little bit helpful. Obviously, that's definitely not required in order to go get the event done, but if you're looking to do pure faction, it might make it a little bit easier. Overall, the uh, faction's going to be pretty annoying and has a lot of self-destruct stuff, so the strategy is probably just going to be spam the legends, a lot of legends, maybe an entire team of the legends, maybe with one mana accumulator like the red accumulating bot in order to... Um, kind of offset it a little bit but for the most part you're pretty much going to spam the legends uh they have 15 percent instant uh, chance to instantly kill themselves and you're basically just going to want to wait out until they kill themselves <laughs> it's going to be uh bringing in a red yellow storm mechanic which actually works pretty good with something that's in soul forge uh which actually is the next thing we need to go over so soul forge i'm actually going to go over weapons first since i kind of just mentioned it so uh, obviously don't forget to go get the hammer of shantang Always like to make sure to leave it for the video, just as a reminder. Uh, of course, uh, as of 5.0, we got 33 new weapons added to the game. Uh, there's 34 kingdoms, but we already had the Broken Spire one. However, um, yeah, do, do make sure to go get these, as uh, almost every event going forward for the next several uh, months uh, will end up having a new weapon because of that. So make sure to grab them and don't forget them, particularly in late game. Obviously, these are completely useless weapons, but if you're a completionist trying to get everything, make sure to get them, because if you uh, miss out on a week, you could be waiting like six, seven uh, months before you see it again, so don't forget. Honey Dipper is the one that's available only today, which you can pretty much ignore. It's a pretty useless weapon. However, if you want to get it for completionist's sake, it is only available today and won't be available for months. Other than that, Sky Hero is the main weapon that you actually want to craft. Uh, Sky Hero is... Um, Slightly above average as far as a weapon is concerned. It's one that you probably haven't seen me run for pretty much since it came out. However, it might have new revived um, capabilities starting this Friday. And we'll definitely mess around with it to see what it can do. Because uh, this is a weapon that is very dependent on red and yellow. And it is very convenient that it is available this week during Shantang week. Because... Um, well, it is a Shantang weapon after all, but uh, because we are getting a red yellow storm due to the Adana kingdom or faction that we're getting this Friday. So with the introduction of a red yellow storm, this weapon could potentially revive and actually become good, possibly with Divinish Ball Aquilin combo or into some kind of other combination because Divinish Ball Aquilin is also pretty good with a red yellow storm. But um, yeah, we'll have to see how this pans out. It destroys a column for every yellow gem destroyed. It creates a bunch of red. So obviously it benefits a lot from um, having a yellow red storm because not only does it need yellow to boost ratio, but it also needs red already on the board in order to land extra turns so it'll be interesting to see how this ends up panning out it also ends up using the color of yellow so it can end up feeding its color back in um overall it's a okay man accumulation option how good it will be once it has the double storm probably not viable enough to be better than other options especially since the thing that red yellow storm is attached to uh, actually it's going to be attached to a weapon and a troop but obviously if you're using a weapon you have to specifically use the troop option and the troop isn't really the greatest of troops so overall it's probably not going to be worth doing however worth considering and as far as weapons are concerned this week it is probably the strongest one uh, that is available other than that we have hook sword which is a little thing for whenever you shantang generally not worth it and we got this new uh, or not new but it's a uh, doom uh, uh, Libram, which is the skull spam for like the little green thing. It's not the full AOE Doom, uh, Doom skull spam one. It's just the one that does like the smaller amounts. Uh, it is weapon. These, this category of weapon could still be okay, but uh, overall, it's um, I don't know. I never really found them to be too useful. Though there are some builds that can be built around them, though, given that it's a Doom weapon and pretty expensive, I would personally pass on it. And other than that, we also have a second epic weapon, uh, the other one probably being a little bit more priority. Uh, however, though they're both equally as useless, <laughs> but uh, this is just uh, another thing that you basically just get simply for the sake of completionist's sake, uh, just to have to have another weapon to go upgrade your kingdom. Because don't forget, we will be needing, once uh, kingdoms reach 20 plus stars, we will be needing those additional weapons. Shantang, I believe, only reached uh, 13, however, uh, still... Uh, worth considering the future. <laughs> um, but um, if you don't have a lot of spare diamonds, obviously just skip on all the useless ones. As far as Soul Forge, uh, we actually have a really good legendary. I normally do not advise crafting legendaries. Uh, it is almost never worth it. However, Tesla is one of those things that you may consider. Uh, if you're currently struggling with pet battles, like for example, tomorrow's pet battle, 
Um, she's insanely good for it. She can also upscale for delves. Um, she ends up boost ratioing them based on all the armor in the game, which uh, does uh, boost based on the enemy's armor, which allows her to upscale through pretty much any piece of content in the entire game. Definitely a good option to consider. It's, oh, it's basically like a true damage Rowan, except instead of being based on her stats, it's based on pretty much everyone else's stats, including hers, but obviously it's more important what the enemy's high stats are as far as how much damage ends up getting. So uh, yeah, pretty decent option. Great for upscaling. If you don't have another option for doing that, it's uh, pretty much the best legend and one, among one of the better troops to do that within the game. So definitely worth considering. As far as mythics are concerned, I'd personally consider passing on most of them. Uh, we do have Infernus this week. Uh, Infernus is kind of in a weird situation where I still feel like it's really good for early game, but it does kind of fall off, uh, especially since there's so many better burn options now, like Zugoth and Super Light Game, that kind of do what uh, Infernus already would have done. Uh, however, it is still a pretty good troop as you're progressing through the game if you need an option that can just kind of all around do everything. It also still counts as ele uh, Divine and Elemental, which are among two of the better types in the entire game particularly elemental increasingly over time these days so uh, it does still get some scaling throughout the game however it has been falling off slightly compared to other options but still has four times burn still has really decent damage output still has man accumulation to that de decent uh, damage output and still has a storm that synergized into his color he doesn't excel exceptionally well at any one thing but he has a really good range of everything that he does and it's one of the reasons he's kind of falling off since he doesn't ultra excel at anything other than burn which is starting to be taken over by zugoth and other things but uh, overall it's um it's still a good troop to consider, nonetheless. Other than that, everything else is probably, unless you need it for a kingdom upgrade, probably worth skipping. Uh, Umanef's still somewhat okay, though. Uh, does get to deal damage to an enemy boosted by their skills, and if the enemy dies, gains uh, 10 attack and creates 12 skulls. It's almost basically like a Zugoth without the burn or freeze if you don't own him. Uh, it's not as good of a Zugoth, obviously, but uh, it's the closest alternative to Zugoth if you have no intention on getting Zugoth anytime soon because he requires so many power orbs. Uh, it's basically the closest equivalent. However, there are many teams where he can't one-to-one -one replace Zugoth, unfortunately, because of the lack of burn or freeze. Uh, but overall, still an okay troop. I personally don't use it much since uh, once you own Zugoth, it becomes pretty obsolete i would say overall but it's kind of like one of those intermediary troops where you'd kind of go in between uh if you wanted like zugoff without the zugoff um but overall um i wouldn't really say worth going for though if you were to go for one of the upgrades for the kingdom that'd probably be the one you go for anyways uh, as far as teams let's go take our tribute because we can't not take tribute uh, and we'll get our 14 gems, which we'll be putting towards uh, probably this faction this Friday, since uh, the minimum you're going to spend is 1,910, and you could easily spend upwards of 2,110. I normally go 2,510 in order to have enough packs to get it done on the Saturday, um, and also just have more stats because the pure faction is probably going to be very annoying, just to kind of save some time there. But anyways, let's go over a couple teams here. So we're lore event high. We kind of already showed this. King Avalon is basically a standard life and death team. King Avalon, life and death, uh, Arachnid Weaver, and the Empower. Uh, generally, you run the Empower in first slot however i personally find it better since you can fully oe wipe and uh, uh just to kind of use it in uh first slot and just use the arachnid weaver as your summon uh, one of the reasons for keeping king avalon all the way in last is you can also get the summon off of him but of course weaver is uh the better summon and um you kind of want to keep the empower for a little bit longer since you will end up being able to go and a man accumulate off that especially if he dies and you're not blocking on green uh anymore or sorry on blue uh anymore from the uh conversion but it pretty much runs as you would any life and death team. You just have much higher damage due to the additional spell increase that you have for the event. Uh, this other team does not actually use any of the tokens either. Um, you do not actually need any of the spell increase in order to make this team work. It's just simply all based around Mang. And yes, you can use this for the event. Uh, it is Mang, Corrupted Urska, uh, the Frostfire King, and Dark uh, Maiden. The only thing that's slightly higher rarity here is the Frostfire King. However, it's not technically a legend, even though it is a legend because it's a faction legend. So if you just go throw a bunch of Chaos Shards, like from the Tuesday uh, faction event at the uh, at the Frostfire uh, Keep down in the Underworld, you'll be able to get it within hopefully a couple hundred if you don't already have them already, and you'll have a copy of him. Uh, it is advised to have it fully traded for actually being able to use it with this team, uh, but basically you get to get freeze and burns down. Uh, you can end up utilizing this with a triple damage burning hero class as well. However, I show it with Titan since more people likely have Titan upgraded as well as it being a safer option. And you basically throw down a mang. You use Corrupted Urskia to get your Enrage if you need more Enrage as well as to get some skulls to proc that off. You can also use uh, Titan with Enrage and just go down that way route as well if you have it at least level 70. Uh, so you can end up getting that. Though it is advised at least having level 40 on it, so you get Barry every brown. And uh, yeah, it's basically centered all around throwing down Mang and getting Skull Spam. Um, of course, you don't get to utilize the extra spell uh, damage that you have this week. 
However, between all of this, between the extra skull spam and rage, the uh, uh, freeze burn and potentially getting triple damage if you switch your hero class to be able to do that. Otherwise, just using it for some amount of damage and the Dark Maiden in order to get uh, HP convert as well as just a little bit of uh, mana since you get to transform yellow into whatever you want. So whatever you're missing at a given time or whatever has alignment, you can end up going for. But uh, overall, it's basically just centered completely around Mang, throw everything down at it and uh, really low rarity. And you can replace out Frost Fairy King if you don't want to go out of your way to get it. And then the team would pretty much be ultra rare and below. And you get Mang at around level 150 or so from having, I believe, 32 red brown mastery, uh, if you don't already have it already. And Titan Hero class is obtained from uh, Stormheim, all the way in the top right, uh, bottom left of Draxum, but all the way in the corner over there. But um, yeah, it's about the cheapest team you could really end up running. And just replace out Frostfire King if you want to go even uh, cheaper there. But it is a pretty nice utility that's pretty low rarity. Anyways, as far as the entirety of the Delve event, uh, if you still haven't done it for Deep Hive, um, pretty easy team. Just run uh, basically Rowan just with our Skia Shield. Uh, this runs all the way from 20 to 500. Uh, you can literally run it the entire time uh, as Rowan normally does. It upscales completely. Also, this is super cheap team too, so I don't even need to show a cheaper one because uh, our Skia Shield is obtained from 250 wins on Sentinel class, which is obtained from our Skia. Rowan you get for free from completing out Forest of Thorns and Leprechaun just a low rarity troop you would need to get two of them though and you get that from glory keys and gem keys and uh, you specifically use it with mechanist class there's two reasons for this one is because it counts as brown so you get five additional magic for your shield uh, as well as it having a lot of other benefits for the shield i think it actually gains 12 total magic for that shield uh, between all the perks that it actually has because it has um, a billion of them it gains five for using a brown it has three for using a shield it has three uh just at the start of battle and has one to all allies so it's uh, 12 additional magic uh, total there, which is 12 additional armor, which is 24 additional armor for when it gets onto Rowane. But the other main reason is it has the spell. Um, if you have it at level 70, every time you take extra turn with uh, Mechanist Hero Class, it does have uh, Dispel All Enemies, which gets rid of Submerge, which obviously is a very annoying mechanic that can kind of get in the way of Rowane. However, one single extra turn, you just got rid of all the Submerge on the opposing team. And yes, this runs the entirety of the Delve. Uh, you can just run an instant kill Rowane up to about 50 or so. And then everything beyond there, you're going to need one or two Urskia Shield cast or even Urskia Shield into double cast Rowane. But uh, regardless, this does scale all the way to 500 until you need to do Pure Faction, in which case you could do something like this. There's a couple different ways you could do this. Though Scarab Knight into Triple Queen Beatrix is probably one of the better ways to go just so you have some tank ability. However, you can just literally go four times Beatrix if you want. Beatrix, obviously the most viable thing from this kingdom, and technically the only viable thing, has uh, one of the best cleanses in the entire game, being able to cleanse on extra turn. It also has a nice mix of green and brown, which is uh, pretty much the same as Truffle's concept. Uh, it doesn't have guarantee extra turn, though. Uh, I generally don't like using Beatrix because of that. However, obviously for this faction, you kind of have to, because uh, she's by far the most viable thing. And uh, she does have true damage, so you do get to kill them without having... You basically just get to ignore the armor, and you get a decent amount of, uh, of damage that way. You also have to keep in mind that she gets double of that value based on her magic, so she's going to have a lot of stats if you're running potions, uh, since if you're running several potions, you'll have all those additional stats that will stack up onto her to give her additional benefit. Other than that, uh, this Thursday, we're going to be having a monk class events. The easiest way to do this is to run a yellow weapon, run Diviner, feed it mana, and go from there. Uh, you can run Tulios behind it to try to feed a little bit extra mana. However, I don't think it'll be necessary, but uh, there really isn't any other troops that really assist it that well, given that I think we only have like seven troops to uh, choose from, because you have to specifically use elves from Shentang as far as your restriction and um yeah pretty straightforward just use a yellow weapon that hits all enemies a full aoe weapon give some yellow mana through diviner and you'll pretty much be good to go and that's all you really have to do and just keep repeating that give tulio if you need more mana and go from there uh you do have access to yagwa if you do want to end up using that but if you're just doing the free battles and not really going for the full event uh, i'm pretty sure just a full aoe cast uh casting that one to a few times is all you're really going to need in order to complete out the event but anyways guys that'll wrap it up for this week if you guys still have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Of course, as far as Guild Wars, we'll be going over that every single night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we always do. Uh, going over that and everything else that we have uh, going on. Other than that, uh, we will, of course, be going over the Friday faction in the morning. And uh, we'll be doing a morning stream on uh, Friday, kind of just going over everything with the faction, getting a good majority of it done, and uh, probably have the pure faction done sometime by Saturday night, as is the game plan. Anyways, guys. I'll catch you guys later. Hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you all so much for watching.